All right, hey guys, this is Miss Bufford. In this video, we're gonna talk about calculating percent composition. So your learning goals here are to be able to calculate the percent composition of elements or ions in compounds. All right, so when we calculate the percent composition of an element in a compound, we do this first by determining the total mass of all of the atoms desired, uh, of the desired element in the compound and then dividing that mass by the total mass of the compound or the total molar mass, right? So um, for example, like we learned in building block one, we first have to calculate the total molar mass for this compound. Um, so I have an example of a hydrocarbon here and I'm gonna go ahead and follow those steps. So I'm gonna list out my elements then I'm going to count how many of each type of atom I have and then multiply those numbers by the molar masses from the periodic table. And um, once I get those products, I'm going to add them together and that is going to give me the total molar mass for this compound right here. All right, then if I wanted to find out um, the percent by mass for carbon, then I would take the entire mass from all of the carbon atoms in that particular molecule, and I would divide that by the mass of the total, the total mass of the compound, so the molar mass for the compound, and then just multiply it by 100, and that would tell me that 81.7% of the mass comes from carbon atoms in this compound. And then if I wanted to do the same thing for hydrogen, I would similarly take the mass of all the hydrogen atoms, divide that by the total molar mass, multiply by 100, and in this case, I would get 18.3% hydrogen by mass, all right? And then of course, because we're determining, you know, percentages here of a whole, if I were to add up all of the percentages at the end, they should equal 100%, all right? So that's just a good way to check your work and uh, see how accurate your numbers are. All right, so let's go ahead and do another example here real quick, well, but we're gonna do an example from your practice packet. So this is one of the graded questions in your practice packet, so it's a freebie. Um, but you'll notice in your practice packets on Class Kick that um, I did not give you the formulas, I gave you the names of the compounds, and so you must practice writing the balanced formulas um, in order to get these percentages correctly. Um, correct. All right. So um, this first compound we're going to do is an example together. I have ammonium sulfite. All right. So if you remember, ammonium is a polyatomic ion. So if we take a look at our polyatomic ion list, ammonium is right up here. It's the only positively charged polyatomic ion on the list of ions that we use in this class. And so I'm going to go ahead and write ammonium here. It's NH4 plus. All right. And then sulfite is also a polyatomic ion, it's down here at the bottom, it's SO3 minus two, so SO3, two minus. All right, and then if I'm gonna squish these together to form an ionic compound, um, remember I'm gonna balance this formula so I can do the quick and easy method by crisscrossing these charges down. And so that's going to give me NH4, two, and remember, I need those parentheses around ammonium because I end up having two of those. So that two crosses down, and then SO3, all right? If you're still confused about crisscrossing, all you need to do is say I've got NH4 plus SO3 minus two, and balance the charges. So over here, I've got a total of minus two charges. Right now, I've got a total of plus one charges. If I add one more ammonium ion, I've got plus two that's going to equal zero, it's gonna balance each other out. So when I write this formula, I need to have two of these and just one sulfate. So either way, we end up with the same answer. The crisscross is just a quick and easy method of doing the same thing. All right, so now that we have our balanced formula, what I need to do is I need to list out the different elements that I have, because I need to calculate my molar mass. And so I've got nitrogen, I've got hydrogen, I've got sulfur, and I've got oxygen. All right, then I need to go through and I need to count how many of each different type of element I have. I have two nitrogen atoms because of that right there. 
I've got eight hydrogens, one sulfur, and three oxygen. Right, the next step is to go ahead and multiply these by the molar masses from the periodic table. So nitrogen, we take a look at our periodic table again. Remember we said nitrogen was gonna be 14.01, 14.01. Hydrogen, if we take a look at hydrogen all the way over here, uh, that's going to be 1.01 .01 after we round it to two decimal places, so 1.01. .01. Sulfur, let's take a look for sulfur. Sulfur is right here, so 32.07. And then oxygen, remember oxygen is right up here, and that's going to be 16.00. All right, now I'm gonna do the math. So this ends up being 28.02. This ends up being 8.08, 32.07, and 48.00. These are all expressed in grams per mole. This is, these are molar masses. Units are super important. All right, now I'm gonna add all these up together. And I end up with 116.17 grams per mole. All right, now this is the part where we're determining the percent composition. So if I wanted to know what percentage of this compound um, is, is nitrogen, then what I would do is I would take the total mass from all the nitrogen atoms, so 28.02. And I would divide that by the total molar mass down here. So 116.17 multiply by 100, and that will give me the percent for nitrogen. Likewise, I'm going to do the same thing for hydrogen. So I'm going to take the total mass from all the hydrogens, 8.08, .08, divide it by the total molar mass of the compound, and multiply by 100. I'm going to do the same thing for sulfur. Sulfur, I'm going to have 32.07 divided by 116.17, oops, times 100. And then the lastly, the same thing for oxygen, and that's going to be 48.00 divided by 116.17 times 100. All right, so if I do this in my calculator, Um, times 100, then I end up with 24.01 for nitrogen, and then for hydrogen, I get 0 0.08 divided by 116.17 times 100. That's going to equal 6.96, 6.96%. These are percentages. Sorry, sometimes my percentages look like nines because I don't separate them. All right, and then 32.07 divided by 116.17. That's going to equal 27.61, 27.61%. And then the last one, I've got 48 divided by 116.17. Multiply by 100, and I get 41.32. 1.32%. All right, so these would be the percentages that you would use for your answers if you're trying to determine the percent of each of these elements. All right, so I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in class. Thanks for watching Buffered Chemistry. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for more chemistry help.